I'm going to go to Patty Mayor. She's going to sort yep. of detail what, what we just learned here. Information of yep. members, there are no further votes today. Now, I remind all members that we have very serious business ahead of us um, in the next few days, and we'll keep you informed as to schedule as things can get scheduled. Republican leader is recognized. The Senate will be in order. Would senators Madam, please take their conversations to the cloak? Madam President, we've set a very unfortunate precedent here. This means that the Senate can ignore, in effect, the House's impeachment. It doesn't make any difference whether our friends on the other side thought he should have been impeached or not. He was. And by doing what we just did, we have, in effect, ignored the directions of the House, which were to have a trial. We had no evidence, no procedure. This is a day that's not a proud day in the history of the Senate. If you want to find her, that would be it. Madam President. Uh, Senator from Utah is recognized. Madam President, I ask unanimous consent to enter into a colloquy with my Republican colleagues. Without objection, so ordered. Madam President. <clears throat> Senator from Utah would hold. We do not have order in the Senate. I would ask all senators who are, to take their conversations to the cloakroom as well as the staff. The Senator would just hold till we have order, please. Senator from Utah is recognized. Thank you, Madam President. What we've witnessed today is truly historic. This has never occurred. Nothing like this has ever occurred. You know, under Article 1, Section 3, Clause 6, we've been given a duty. We've been given this, the sole exclusive power to try all impeachments. Try all impeachments. Not some of them, not just those with which we have happened to agree, not just those that we are happy that the House of Representatives undertook to prosecute, but all. The word try is also significant. It refers to the word trial. It's the same word. It's a proceeding in which the law and the facts are presented to finders of fact in front of judges in order to reach an ultimate disposition. In a criminal proceeding, it would be a, an ultimate disposition culminating in a verdict of guilty or not guilty. We were precluded from doing that job today, and we were precluded from doing so in a way that is not only ahistoric and unprecedented, but also counter-constitutional. Nothing could be further from the plain structure, text, and history of the Constitution than that. So let's look at the arguments that we would have heard, that we could have heard, that we should have heard today, had things unfolded as they were supposed to had things unfolded in a manner consistent with the oath that we took, first when we were sworn in as United States Senators, and we're, we're all required to take the same oath to the Constitution when we did that, but also the oath that we took just a few hours ago in this very chamber, in this very case, to decide this case impartially. What would we have heard? Well, first and foremost, regardless of what you think about what a trial consists of or how different people might cleverly define the term. A trial will always, at a minimum, involve lawyers. Involve lawyers. And unless the person is proceeding pro se, you will always have lawyers there. Or at least one side will always be represented by lawyers. And in 99.9% .9 of all cases, both sides will. You will hear from lawyers. We didn't hear that today. We didn't hear from the committee of individuals appointed by the House of Representatives to be the, the House impeachment managers or prosecutors. What else would you expect to hear? Well, you'd, you'd hear uh, evidence. Evidence would be brought in. Sometimes trials in the Senate involve bringing in evidence uh, in a documentary form. Other times you might have witnesses. We didn't have any witnesses. We didn't have any documentary evidence other than that which was charged. So let's talk about what was charged and what evidence we could have, would have, and should have heard had we done our job today. Well, the, the accusations in this impeachment trial 
can be fit into two categories. Category one is found in Article one of the Articles of Impeachment. Article one alleges that Secretary Mayorkas repeatedly, defiantly, did the exact opposite of what federal law requires, namely that under myriad circumstances, eight or nine different statutory provisions that he violated, he was required to detain people whom he did not detain. But it's not just that he didn't do what the law required, he did the exact opposite of that. Instead of holding them until such time as they could be removed or alternatively adjudicated to have the status, whether under uh, impeach, uh, w whether in the context of immigration. All right, uh, we're, we're continuing to monitor Senator Lee. Not all pleased uh, that this thing has just gone away. In case you just joined us, the Senate has essentially dismissed uh, the two impeachment charges against Alejandro Mayorkas, the Homeland Security Secretary. This essentially ends the Republican effort to remove the Cabinet Secretary from his office. This was expected. I don't know if it was expected to end quite this way. It was deemed to be something that would be quick, essentially taking the two charges against Mayorkas and deeming whether they were constitutional or not. In the end, uh, almost along party lines exactly, they decided along party lines uh, that they were unconstitutional, and that essentially made a boot point of, of the whole of the whole thing. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.